Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for being here today. Um, I especially want to thank everyone behind me who are just a few of the many people in Vermont who have worked so hard this session to pass data privacy in the kids' code. This is a landmark bill, H-121, um, that we're celebrating today. This is a milestone. It's a strong data privacy bill, and importantly to many of the parents and kids up here today, it's a bill that would make the online environment for Vermont kids safer at a time when that's a critical priority for parents and kids in Vermont. Um, this bill was passed unanimously. Every legislator in Vermont supports this bill, but we are now facing an onslaught of lobbying by big tech, companies that represent Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Apple, Google, their organizational trade associations have written to the governor, Governor Scott, telling him to veto this bill that was passed unanimously. And people in Vermont are saying, no way. Uh, big tech's influence has been a problem in other states, but big tech hasn't paid too much attention to Vermont until this year, because this year we're about to make real progress. And so we're standing up and we're saying, big tech, you're not gonna tell us what to do in Vermont. Vermont families know what they need to do. They've worked hard for this bill. And now Governor Scott has an opportunity to lead. Um, and this is a pivotal moment. We're so excited um, that we're so close to the finish line on these bills. Um, and parents are standing up, kids are standing up and saying, time to get the job done. Uh, I'm thrilled to introduce you to one of those parents now, Laura Derringer. The unintended consequences have arrived. Social media has a colossal, horrific body count. My name is Laura Derendinger. I'm a mother of four children, ages 14, 13, 10, and eight. My other kids are actually here. They just ran up to get a snack. So kiddos, you wanna come on up <laughs> to stand next to mom? <laughs> I appeal to you, Governor Scott, please help save our children by signing H-121, the Kids Code, and the Comprehensive Data Privacy Bill into law. Our best policy decisions to protect children are informed by independent research that is not polluted by, independent, by commercial industry interests. We know the data shows that from the early 2010s, we saw a steep rise in youth self-harm, suicide-related emergency room visits, increased hospital admissions for acute psychiatric distress. There is no conflict in the data. The real conflict is commercial industry that made social media products that harm our children, which is at odds, which is what is healthy for our children. This legislation, the Kids Code, will require companies to stop profiting by making our children sick. Right now, phones are a vector of disease. Children are becoming ill from the pathogens of harmful cyberbullying, suicide content, and other online harms, such as sex extortion and fentanyl access. This is all fed to them intentionally by design. The companies know what they're doing. The phone-based childhood has, been has to be replaced with a play-based childhood in the real world. This legislation is one tool of many tools that will help keep our children safe from online harms. Governor Scott, we all know that there is a youth mental health crisis. So because it's a crisis, please sign this now to help address the mental health crisis in our children. Thank you. Thanks so much, Laura. Sorry. Hi, I'm Lizzie. I'm with the Center for Humane Technology, a national nonprofit working to align technology with humanity's best interest. I'm also a member of Gen Z. I know what it's like to be a teenage girl who can't fall asleep at night because I spent too much time on my phone affecting my sleep, my grades, and my relationships. 
and I'm proud to be one of the organizations that's helped support the lawmakers and advocates here in Vermont to get H-121, the Vermont Data Privacy Bill and Kids Code to the governor's desk. And Governor Scott, we hope that you can sign it because while kids come first, our data and everyone else comes next. So it's not enough to just keep kids safe online, but to protect all of our data. So to speak a little bit about that, I'd like to invite um, Jason from Front Porch Forum to speak a little bit about this. Thank you. My name is Jason Van Dreisch. I'm the Chief of Staff at Front Porch Forum here in Vermont. Um, I testified before the Senate and the House to advocate for the Vermont Kids Code, which is something that Front Porch Forum very rarely does. And the reason was that this legislation resonates deeply with Front Porch Forum's mission to help neighbors connect and build community. And it stands in stark contrast with big tech's reckless and harmful prioritization of profits over privacy, safety, and genuine community building. Um, during my testimony, I focused on how the major tech platform's massive profits depend on invasive tracking and algorithms designed for addiction. By contrast, Front Porch Forum is a successful Vermont-grown business that helps Vermonters connect online with nearby neighbors without the surveillance and the outrage baiting that's the bread and butter of the big tech giants. The Vermont Kids Code would mark a critical shift towards what's known as data respect, meaning using people's and especially kids' information in ways that are consistent with their well-being and aligned with why they uh, signed up for the service in the first place. This is the exact opposite of the data exploitation that is the norm in the tech industry, and that's exactly why this bill is so needed. More specifically, the, the code would require that online products that are reasonably likely to be used by kids under 18 be age appropriate, institute privacy by design and by default, and be designed to promote kids' best interests. That all sounds really common sense and straightforward, but the truth is it is very much not the norm, uh, which is why we need a law to make it the norm, because it hasn't happened through the market forces that have driven uh, the development of social media and tech platforms to date. Um, and contrary to what big tech's lobbyists claim, and it sounds like there's a lot of this going on right now, everything that the Vermont Kids Code calls for is completely within reach, particularly for companies with massive resources that employ some of the smartest minds. Waiting for the dump truck to go by particularly for massive companies with uh, for companies with massive resources that employ some of the smartest minds in the tech business if front porch forum can do it on the effectively shoestring budget that we have compared to any of these huge tech companies they can certainly do it as well the legislature has passed um, the vermont kids code and now it's up to the governor we urge him to sign this bill into law, ensuring that the digital spaces where Vermont's kids spend time are as safe and as healthy as we expect our real world communities to be. Thank you. I'm cleaning up. <clears throat> Good afternoon. My name is Zach Tominelli, and I'm a consumer protection advocate for the Vermont Public Interest Research Group, VPIRG. As the state's largest consumer protection advocacy organization, VPIRG has been proud to support legislation that gives Vermonters more control over their personal information and keeps us safer online. We were proud to support Vermont's first in the nation data broker registry. We were proud to support Vermont's student online privacy law that prevented educational technology companies from using student data for non-educational purposes. And we are incredibly proud to support this landmark legislation, the Vermont Data Privacy Act and Age Appropriate Design Code. Right now, Vermonters' web searches, online purchases, and location check-ins are being harvested, bought, and sold completely legally. That unchecked spread of our information exposes consumers to all sorts of threats, like scams, identity theft, harassment, and discrimination. Age 121 begins to change that 
by requiring businesses to limit the information that they collect on consumers to only that which is necessary to provide the good or service that a consumer is seeking. It gives consumers the ability to opt out of having their data sold, used for targeted advertising or profiling. It prohibits businesses from processing Vermonter's most sensitive data without the consumer's consent, and it prohibits the sale of that same sensitive data outright. And importantly, this bill provides consumers the ability to hold the largest data collectors that violate their privacy rights accountable in court. It's also important to note that this bill is the result of collaboration and hard fought compromise. And that is reflected in the broad support it received in the legislature. This bill passed the House of Representatives 139 to three, winning support from Republicans, Democrats, progressives, libertarians, and independents. It passed the Senate on a voice vote. If you are looking for something that has consensus support, this is it. So we're here today with a simple message. Data privacy can't wait. Keep kids safe online. Governor Scott, sign H-121 into law. Thank you. And we are happy to take any questions you might have or also off to the side. Thanks everyone for coming. I'm happy to take questions or pull aside. Um, Days. Um, I saw that there's some uh, Vermont-based companies, including Vermont Country Store and Orvis, that um, have spoken out against the bill. So I'm just uh, wondering if you could kind of talk a little bit about what their objections are and yeah. how you respond to, to that. So, you know, I, I'm not going to speak about any specific company, but I will say that we know this is a tactic that big tech uses. Um, big tech knows that it's not popular to stand up against kids and data privacy. And so they uh, are very strategic about lobbying, giving donations, uh, making connections. We see this in other states too, where uh, the opposition seems to be coming from within the state, but really what's pushing that ball forward is forces outside the state. And we do see small businesses here in Vermont, you've just heard from one, that, that absolutely do support this and say that they can comply with it. And so I think that where the opposition, if you, if you really follow where the opposition is coming from and where the money that is being spent against this bill that has community support is coming from, it's coming from out of state. It's not coming primarily from Vermont small businesses. It's coming from big, huge businesses in California. Was part of the compromise that was reached about the kind of suing businesses that served 100,000 or more for bonsters, was that, was that kind of in response to some kind of critique or concern about small businesses being um, you know, harmed by mm -hmm. this, this law? Or this yeah, I'll let Zach take that. Sure. Uh, so yeah, I think you're referring to the, the private right of action, uh, and that has been a point of discussion. It was absolutely part of the compromise. Uh, I guess I would say two things about private rights of action, and in particular in this bill. First, the private right of action, the ability of a consumer to hold somebody who violates their rights accountable in court, it is a long-standing part of consumer protection law. It is in Vermont's Consumer Protection Act, which is the underlying law in many of our other consumer protection statutes. Uh, and VPIRG, we think that that is incredibly important. If we are going to establish rights for consumers, like we do in this bill, uh, giving them privacy rights, uh, if a entity violates those rights, we believe that consumers should have the ability to hold that entity accountable in court. That being said, this bill limits that private right of action, and that is the result of a compromise. Uh, it does that in a few different ways. First, the private right of action does not become available until 2027, which gives businesses a fairly long time to understand the law, come into compliance, really get on board. And then when it does come online, it only applies to data brokers and large data collectors, those who uh, process the data of uh, 100,000 or more Vermonters, individual Vermonters in a given year. So that actually does not apply to that many Vermont small businesses, quite frankly. And then third, it actually, once it only comes on, online, it only applies to violations of the sensitive data provisions of the bill. So it is really tailored, really limited, um, but still provides consumers uh, that meaningful recourse, particularly for the most egregious violations, violations of that sensitive data provision by the largest data collectors. So assuming that this is going to eventually pass in Vermont, can you give us an idea of what the next steps are? So what are you going to be working towards next year and the year after? So 
passing a law is just the beginning. Then we need to make sure that this law is actually working. We need to implement it carefully because kids are being hurt in Vermont and people's data is being abused in Vermont. And we need to make sure not only is this bill signed into law, but it's implemented in a way that's effective in helping kids, helping teens, and allowing people to be empowered and to take some control over their data, no matter what age they are. Uh, if you live in Vermont, you should, have that, you should have that certainty, and we need to follow this through all the way to make sure that it gets done and implemented right. Any other questions? Can you just talk about how many states have similar laws? Yeah, so um, data privacy and the kids code together passed in Maryland unanimously and were signed into law uh, in early May. Um, that, that's a huge uh, accomplishment and Vermont has the opportunity to be the second state in the nation this year to pass data privacy and the kids code together. Not together, no. All right, thank you so much for coming out. I'm happy to do pull asides, really appreciate it. Well, I'm Liz Edsel. I'm a Winooski resident and I work at VPIRG and I'm so happy to be here today. Uh, I really hope the governor signs this data privacy and kids code into law. I'm a parent of young kids and it's alarming how um, much they're exposed to and um, also just as a user of the internet and all uh, things um, internet related, I have uh, a lot of concerns over how my information is being used and I really appreciate the, the increased protections that this um, bill will accomplish. So um, yeah, I'm so grateful to the advocates and others who have made this happen.